So this morning, we're going to invite him up here to talk about the value of industry standardization in pr promoting ICT innovation. And hopefully you'll say a little bit about uh, why Huawei you know, decided to become a platinum member of the Open Group. So please, bid a, a great big Open Group welcome. Over Chung. There you go. And you need, you need that. Are you on? Hello? Yeah? OK, that's good. OK, good morning, everyone. Uh, as Alan mentioned, uh, well, first, thanks, Alan, to introduce. So before I start, I would like to ask a very simple question. How many of you have heard about Huawei? OK, more than 50%, not bad. OK. Well, before I start, I would like to uh, say something. Well, it's an honor for me to represent Huawei here. Uh, well, I will be joining the uh, governing board of the Open Group. And most important, I would like to thank you, uh, uh, Chris Ford from uh, Open Group and Maggie Go as well. So without uh, both of them, we didn't know how to go through the process of becoming a platinum member. Well, I will say um, there was a lot of hack up, to be honest, during the past six months, internally, externally, What's the value of Huawei being the platinum member? But I think today, we have answered all these questions. And that's why I'm standing here. And um, so we see tremendous value. And I hope after my uh, 30, 30, 35 minutes presentation, you will understand why uh, Huawei will, be, will become the platinum member. So to begin with, I have a few slides to introduce Huawei. So Huawei is a China company. Its headquarter is in Shenzhen, founded in 1987. Worldwide, we have 170,000 headcounts. And we operate in 170 plus countries and Fortune 500 companies. And uh, we are a leading global information and communications technology solutions provider. So Huawei business. So maybe it's not really, um, uh, not all our business are very active in the US uh, because of some reasons. But as you can see, uh, the major business is carrier. Uh, the next will be our consumer. And actually, this ratio will be significantly changed in the first half of 2015. Because I just heard that our consumer business colleagues will get one extra bonus because they have met their sales target just of the 2015, just by six months of the 2015. So they're doing a very good job in this year. And the uh, right-hand side, you can see the R&D. Huawei is an ICT solution provider. We're really serious in the R&D investment spending. So over the past 10 years, it's about US dollar, 30 billion. 30 billion US dollar R&D, and um, it's, a, it's a significant number. So uh, we have R&D center really worldwide and several uh, offices in the uh, US and Canada as well. So this, uh, these are our company uh, currently, you can say the main focus, better connect countries, industries, and systems. So uh, European Union Horizon 2020 strategy. So Huawei is actively participating. China Liu Silk Road strategy. So helping the uh, Middle East, Asia, other countries on the infrastructures. Uh, and Industry 4.0, I heard, is briefly mentioned yesterday. And most important, uh, the US, 15 tree, US dollar 15 trillion digital economy. And I think this is one of the major reasons uh, attract Huawei to become the platinum member. <laughs> I will say the, uh, the whole IT, the um, enterprise architecture, the uh, healthcare forum, and the IT for IT. And lastly, the better connected systems, the end-to-end -end process uh, streamlining. 
we are really uh, interested uh, and would we'll, we'll like to contribute in the uh, business architecture activities under the EA. So we just pick, simply pick two, it's not all. So um, one of my job is also, uh, as Alan was making jokes to me, actually it's not there. I actually responsible for the industry development and standards as well. So I have, you will see a picture later about my life, is more than 15, 20 industry uh, bodies or SDO, standard developing organizations I need to deal with. So you can see the open group, well, I hope it's correct, okay? So the <clears throat> uh, architecture forum, IT for IT, Archimate, open platform, um, and certification. And this certification, we believe that this certification work group can help uh, our global services to, uh, how should I say, to be able to speak and work with the IT industries, uh, peers very well. Uh, the uh, uh, architecture and the IT specialist. And on the right hand side, you see TM Forum. TM Forum stands for Tele Management Forum. It's a, basically, it represents well, 60% of the uh, 1.8 trillion business in the telecommunication industries. So I hope we will make the open group become, I don't know, how, what's the trillion number we can represent here. Uh, as you can see, that there's a customer centric at the top, uh, open and partner effectively, NFV, uh, lab web function virtualization, and LJ and virtualized. So uh, my side are very active in the open group and TM forum. And when we put them together, actually in past six months, when we put these two organizations or forums together, we identify that telco guide, okay, how, because we are really, uh, well, one of the leader, top two leader in telecom industry, and also uh, in the digital business strategy and customer experience work group. I will introduce later customer experience, which is, well, if you're familiar with Forrester, they use the term outside in. When I talk to many CTO, CIO, we, are, we can't be just inside, inside, or inside out. We need to be outside in. And even guarding a co-ed term, something called outside out as well. That may be the next step of our contribution or working with, uh, and working with other companies uh, at the open group, the outside out. So let me make an advertisement here, not commercial, okay? So there's a, um, join us at the Digital Business Strategy and Customer Experience Work Group discussion at Open Platform 3.0 Forum meeting tomorrow morning. 9 to 10.30. And this is a work group that we will look at the business strategy to look at the customer experience. What kind of experience, what kind of outside in is required to make our business can, uh, able to be transformed. So let me briefly to mention about what, when we talk about customer experience, what, what do we really mean here? So you can see from the uh, top left, Okay, it's a kind of the a life cycle. I have to say this is mostly we tailored for telecom, and we would like to work with healthcare. We would like to work with uh, other industries, maybe the mining, automobile, other industries. Do we need to customize specific customer or user life cycle? As you can see from buying, using, and sharing. And after the life cycle, what Huawei has been contributing at the TM forum is the ROI calculation. Without money, the world won't, the business won't run. So we really look at how should we do the ROI calculation. Uh, we defining the CD metrics, customer experience metrics. So this metrics can enable us to do the ROI. So we can go and talk to procurement, to the business people. And as being mentioned, uh, I'm the founder, also the head of the Customer Experience Transformation Center. These are our positionings. Uh, first, as Sunjan, so we turn around the mindset, right? We, we, we have been talking a lot about B2B or B2B2C, which we don't agree. We believe that we should, we should change our mindset from C to B to B, which is from consumer, from customer, to drive the business, 
do we really understand the business? I enjoyed very much yesterday to participate the um, uh, the open platform and the IT for IT. But I may be wrong. But I think we still don't have enough focus about who are paying our business. And the co-create with operators, partners, and target measurable business outcomes are our focus at our Shenzhen headquarters. And in London, uh, we are hearing more and more about uh, not just the telco, but other uh, enterprises as well. Talking about customer-centric operating model, what, what does it really mean? Can we actually do something at the open group? Combining the customer aspect and the IT aspect considerations together. Single view of customers and operations. Yesterday I joined uh, the principal analyst, Michelle from Forrester, I enjoy a lot. And most important, the business-led ICT transformation. It's not just ICT transformation. It must be business-led. And I believe the BA, the business architecture, we can contribute and we can learn from, uh, from the open group and from the other companies as well. So in Huawei, uh, we have been researching over, well, I would say more than 12 months. We come out with a simple word, which is roles. What does it really mean? Well, we believe this is an experience principles for all industries. Real time, and I will explain what does it really mean later. On demand, all online, DIY, and social. And again, yesterday I was in the uh, presentation by, uh, from NTT Data. I really, in, I really uh, inspired uh, by, by, by the uh, presenters about the um, company social. What does it really mean? So the Huawei initiative, I think this is one of our interests is to push forward a global study on the roles experience requirements for consumers, for workers and uh, work, sorry, workforce and partners, and also internal things and objects as well. Uh, I, I'm not sure how you are familiar with the uh, telecom industry. So now we are in the 4G. LTD, and a lot of people are talking about 5G. So how this 5G will be interact or related to our IT or from the experience perspective? I will, I'm going to give an example, really interesting, that when we work with uh, car manufacturers, that is what they're asking us uh, to look into. So a case for objects, ex object, objects uh, experience, for 4G, with the latency, with the, uh, we are talking about, it will take 1.4 meter to stop a car running at 100 kilometer per hour. But at 5G, that will be 2.8 centimeters. So there's a good reason that for automobile industry to require that kind of real-time requirement. And also for uh, when we uh, discuss with a CIO of a, uh, 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 well, about customer services. So they have been arguing about what is real time? What kind of real time is required? So when a customer call into a call center, well, does, does the operator really know what is going on? Or talking about the technology real time? One minute, one second, one minute second? So this kind of real-time definition or experience definitions leads to tie back to the business context. Business leads to drive the technology requirements. So let's go to the board level, talking about what, how the company board are evaluating their executive performance. So this is a, there's a change of, uh, previously you can see that 25% uh, is talking about lab promoter score. If you are not aware, uh, what is lab promoter score is a way to measure loyalty, advocacy, okay? Would you recommend the open group to your colleagues or to your competitors, okay, whatever. And 75% will be measuring uh, financials, EBITDA and all this. And we are seeing a change here. We are seeing a change of the rating of the uh, 
customer aspects. They met pro let promoter score, branding, and other customer measures increase from 25 to 40%. So what I really want to say is, in, the, in, our, in our industry, our, our, our Huawei customer, we observe that the board are actually evalu evaluating not simply financials, but also the happiness, the satisfaction, the loyalty of their end customers as well. And we have observed, well, uh, in China, like uh, Pingong Financials, Vodafone in Europe, Air China, <coughs> and Enterprise as well, okay? So I talk a lot, see customer experience. You may ask, Trevor, are you at the wrong forum? Why you talk about customer experience for so long? There's a good reason, because of this slide. We talk about customer experience, but we need to implement, we need to talk to the IT or I, uh, uh, ICT uh, 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 colleagues. So this is, we need to bridge the gap. We would like to combine customer experience and enterprise architecture in a way that we are, define, we are developing or defining an architecture for considering experience aspect as well. As you can see, um, thinking from the customer experience, the customer leads, the strategy, what kind of metrics. Then the corresponding EA lead to deliver the business outcome, align the business strategy, business model, and other, other items as well. We are already having several projects uh, what should I say, practicing these methodologies with operators. We identify, we, we already seeing that, uh, and to be fair, uh, why we are so eager to become platinum member is, in many ways, in, in, we, we, we observe that. We observe that many companies start to have an architect coming to talk to us. They want us to talk, look into the telco, the industries, and the buyers. How all this work together? And this is a diagram, very interesting, we, when we uh, work with Gartner. So from the, uh, from the top left, the strategy, conceptual, contextual, and all the way to physical. We realize that we have invested a lot people in solution architecture. Designer, which are building one solution. But now, with the, with the digital transformations, well, I'll, I'll, uh, most of the analyst firm talk about, well, like IDC, MIT, Gardiner, Florista, right? More or less, everybody used the five things. The uh, cloud, big data, social, mobile, and objects, or internet of things. So with all this disruptive technology coming, it's the right time for the industry to relook at what is the positioning of the enterprise architecture in the, in, from the operational aspects point of view. So we believe that each line of business, they will have their business direction planning, and then there will be enterprise architecture viewpoints, what can be done, what can't be done, the governance or whatever, and then the application strategy. In telco, in telecom industry, we believe that there's a lot of things needs to be uh, we develop or we invest, but we need to have a good architectural viewpoints uh, to work with the C level. So, I just talk about CE customer experience and enterprise architecture. Is it enough? No, that's why we come here, because we know that well, like Togov. Uh, all these are quite mature and there's a, there's a very good ecosystems and there's lots of practitioners in the industry, but we, are, we realize that it's still not enough. So we are really clean to uh, learn and contribute about this, uh, well, on the all new IT management, on the IT for IT, how we really bring the TOGOF, uh, uh, LGAO, uh, project management, ITO together, which to, uh, we start to understand. I really enjoyed yesterday. Uh, I'm not. I think uh, Lars is not here. Yeah, I think I think we really enjoy when we discuss with uh, Lars from HP 
very open and direct discussion about the knowledge, the understanding of the IT for IT. We really appreciate the um, environment the open group can offer to us. And I, I specifically highlight user is the love star. Therefore, start with IT use cases. And I can't really read below what I see less, something about customer. This is perfectly aligned with what I've been driving in Huawei Global Services in past five years. User-centric, customer-centric, using use cases to build the corresponding solution. Somehow when we saw these two slides, we just feel like we are funding a, we found a bar that we lost something like 10 years ago. Okay? That's this kind of feeling. Yeah, I feel, I feel bad that actually I, I should represent Huawei or I should influence our executives to be platinum member of the open group three or four or five years earlier. So we could participate uh, the origination of the IT or, or of the IT for IT much earlier. But it's still not too late. I, I we realized that from yesterday forum discussion, there's still a lot of things Huawei can participate. So we talk about um, partnerships. Um, let me think about how should I tell you about this project. We are, I, I'm, I'm also the executive sponsor of this as well. So we are working with SAP. So we believe that, well, again, it can't be inside in. It should be outside in and thinking from customer experience and thinking from business perspective. So there's an initiative uh, I was invited to Orlando this year uh, for the, to, to attend the SAP user group meeting. I was quite inspired by the SAP idea, by the founder, actually Professor HP. Uh, what were we defined? How can we actually, re how can we provide a real-time information environment for a company executives to be able to know what, he sh what they should do with their business. The instant decision, that kind of environment is, can be provided. And you can see at the right hand side the pictures, July 2015. So we had a design thinking workshop. So the reason I put up this slide is uh, we are very much work with many companies and we apply the industry practice like design thinking so after this, after my presentation, as I said, I really would like to work with other companies, other industries in the experience definitions uh, and also the, um, the working group tomorrow morning uh, from 9 to 10.30. Please join us and we can drive the industry forward. So this is the slide which is my nightmare every day, every night. So you saw I mentioned about TM Forum and the open group, but in fact, I need to look at much bigger industry ecosystems. So we are seeing a lot of destructive forces, destructive force. So you can see like the internet of things, um, network function virtualization, 5G codification. We, we, are hand, we are handling so many technologies coming out but how can we put them together? How can we manage them become a business? This is the challenge. And we believe that the enterprise architecture, the IT for IT can play a key role at the center of all these technologies. And as I mentioned, there's a uh, good telco standards and we understand the, well, the enterprise architectures, the business data application and technology, but most important is, let's move back to talk about business. The measurable business outcome, the business capabilities, this is something we would like to talk more with other industries. How can we, telco or ICT work with other industries to define the necessary capabilities? And this is my last slide in summary. Contribute telco, ICT, and CM knowledge. This is what we will like to bring onto the table.
commit in the EA, BA, IT for IT, open platform, security forums, uh, well, ND from Huawei Security has been at, has been very active at the TM for, uh, at the Open Group. Define roles, experience across all industries because you guys need connectivity. You you we need to define real time, and I learned something very good yesterday from NTT data about so so. And lastly, ICT innovation for business transformation with partners, as I show an example with SAP, and we would like to work with others, and you all right here. So thank you very much. Let's building a better connected world. Thank you, that's all I have. Hi. <clears throat> yeah, we'll just take these two seats. Okay, yeah. So um, what we're gonna do now is get uh, Chris Ford to ask some questions, and you know Chris is the VP of Architecture and also of the Asia Pacific region. Yeah. And while we do it, while Chris is getting ready, we should give a shout out to Maggie Gao as well, who's worked tirelessly on uh, this and, and other things in, in, in China. So Chris, you got the questions? Yes, um, the first question is, uh, Trevor, what level of commitment is there to these transformation initiatives inside Huawei? Wow. This is a really good question. This really let me express my pain every day, okay? So actually this, in this initiative here is all the way to our rotating CEO. Our rotating, well, our rotating CEO already believe that the whole architecture needs to be, well, the architecture needs to be evolved and we need uh, uh, a lot of new technique and practice to be uh, let me think the proper word, to be absorbed or picked up by the company, by Huawei. And also the, uh, our customers in telco and uh, uh, energy and mining industries as well. And to my, I, I'm under Global Services and my president, actually he is the executive sponsor and actually he's the person to sign off the check, okay? So uh, today we have, how many of us here? I think six, seven of us from Huawei. So we have uh, people uh, EA certified uh, with TOGOF as well. So I will say, in short, we are serious, we fully commit, and this initiative is not from global services, but also from our Huawei internal business process and IT department as well. Yeah, yeah and on that subject, um, Huawei has been a, a user internally of TOGAF for some time. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, after all this, because now is at the really senior level at Huawei to drive this forward, so they expect updates. <laughs> so that's why they ping on me. Okay. So in, in my 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 president is a very simple person. He was the CFO of Huawei. So he always tell me, Trevor, doesn't matter. You come for one million, you just give me back hundred million, then it's fine. He's a finance guy. Okay. Easy. Yeah. Understand that. So in terms of the uh, level of commitment, what kind of time frame is Huawei looking for to undertake these transformation activities? What, what's your time scale for these kinds of activities? Well, these questions, I'm honest with you, I, I'm trying to figure them out here, okay? Uh, I have a team participating, uh, participating in Madrid and other colleagues from other departments as well. But I will be looking at something just out of my head at this moment. I'm looking at in two years, Huawei must be able to transform the skill set, the knowledge, the way we run our business. The reason I put up the very compact diagram on NFV IoT 5G, because we realize that when we get into 5G, we must be transformed. If we haven't transformed, then we will be transformed by the industry. So it's bad. So we better transform ourselves by our own pace. Okay, uh, the next question is, uh, customer experience includes confidence and personal data privacy, so personally identifiable information, this sort of thing, right? Are, uh, is Huawei involved or committed to protect data through privacy by design initiatives? Is that a component of your strategies? Yes, of course. Actually, we work well, I don't know about US side, America side, but in Europe side, Germany has the um, toughest 
privacy law, and we are doing business in Germany now. Okay, so definitely yes, and uh, this is we call it a red line. We can level costs in Huawei. Yes. So what you're doing in the Open Group is very much a global um, standards activity. Um, will you also be active with us in uh, China for local uh, membership activity as well? Yes, well there's a uh, forum in September, right? So mm -hmm. I've been discussing with Chris and Mackie as well, for right. sure, yes. Cool. Yeah, we will uh, work with others and also we are very active in the customer experience management space mm -hmm. in China as well. Mm -hmm. I think this is one of the value for Huawei yeah. to be in China, so we can bring in that uh, ecosystem yeah. with the Open Group. Yeah, we're, we're really pleased about the growing footprint that the Open Group has in China. Yeah. And looking forward to growing that. Yeah. So, for your information, China is about less than 30%, more than 25% annual revenue of Huawei. So, right. Huawei actually more than 70% mm -hmm. sales and revenue are outside China nowadays. Right. But still, it's the biggest yeah. to us. But as, as well as all the infrastructure and the commercial services, you're also a, a, one of the biggest manufacturers of um, cell phones, mobile phones. Yes. As like, I said, our consumer business unit colleagues are very like happy to get a, another bonus check this month. Yeah, it's like number three in the world. Yes, I think so. After yeah. Apple and Samsung now. Yeah. yeah. I didn't believe it as well. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so uh, there's a related question uh, to the privacy one. How do you manage uh, I don't think this means you personally, but how does Huawei manage uh, information as part of the customer experience? Uh, how do you reach the balance between uh, non-disclosure and reaching customers' needs in terms of information? Yeah, actually, it's very simple to us because uh, we deal with a lot of business, still the carrier business. We will work with the local operators like Vodafone or T-Mobile to follow their government or well, their group privacy requirements. I can give you an example. Like Germany, basically we cannot store the data. Okay? So they have to, through a, or in the UK, they have to go through a um, commercial agreement which is opt-in, similar in the US. So when people opt-in certain information or data, then we can access. So to us, uh, it's very simple. Again, we follow the local government and regulation policies and work with the local operators and enterprise. Yeah. Okay. okay, I was actually having a conversation uh, yesterday at the uh, Pavilion event with a couple of members, and we were talking about the kind of mega, mega trends type of thing of the nature of the change that technology availability in emerging markets like in the African, uh, African continent is, is driving. Can you, Huawei's presence uh, an investment in that continent is significant. Can you comment on the kinds of changes you perceive to be possible in the African continent with the, with the direction that you're taking here? Mm. I personally have uh, direct business with the uh, MTN and Orange and the uh, business over there. I think actually in terms of the, um, I would say they are looking for a centralized operating model and also a customer-centric operating model. So that's why I mentioned about our UK CTC. Can we actually figure out with the architecture, with the IT for IT, thinking more from the customer, thinking more from the business perspective to design. I understand, well, by model IT, two-speed IT, all these buzzwords, okay, already, or, co or concept already incorporate. But I, I need to look into more. Uh, the African market, actually, uh, there's a, there, we, we observe there's some very innovative or business, business people, but they need a more centralized, they need a more, uh, the, the architecture, to, especially the, um, the application strategy, needs to be centralized for a small group of people and it's not ready yet. It is still very much uh, scattered around the, 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 the smart people, the young, the millennium generation doesn't have the system to innovate yet. Yeah. And, and this is why um, I'm thinking what I can say, what I can't say, that's why. Uh, 
Uh, <laughs> so I think this is why we, 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 we come here and we would like to figure out a way, not just for the Europe, Middle East, but also, as you said, Latin America and African market as well. Okay. okay. So one of the things that people may not know is that as well as enterprise architecture and integration and so on, Huawei has been very active in the Open Trusted Technology Forum here um, and you know, a leader in that. And we were talking about cyber security yesterday. Yeah. And I think Huawei is leading some of that activity in the Open Group already. Mm. Yes. I, I will pass to well, Andy. I think he is representing from our US yeah. uh, security office. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, as I discussed with him, uh, Lexis, we need to work across with other business units as well. Okay, within Huawei to embrace and really execute. Yeah. Okay. Can you give a final plug for the um, work group? Oh, uh, this the working group tomorrow. Oh, uh, well, again, um, the ROSE is our, well, the experience principle. We have been discussing with many companies and, uh, and consumers. And we hope that uh, we would like other companies uh, to participate and then we can come out a uh, working plan together. So I will say two, three months ago, we had uh, several conference calls. We have many, uh, I think more than 20 participants on the call. But I hope that well, now we, get, we are here, we can talk face to face, and let's draw a plan together. Yes, cool. Ellen. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ellen. Well done. Thank you. Thank you.